house being set on fire after I stood up and spoke about anti-social behaviour while we were asleep at night. I was driving through a village and this uh, this is where it gets to. So in between two villages, Wingate and Shotton, which is where I live, I was driving um, to Shotton, go to the garden centre, get some Mother's Day flowers for the kids. Um, a Snapchat image of my house from um, it's just a name who I've never heard of before in my life, I don't know who he is. And it was a house, picture of my house with a flame emoji in front of us. Sean, I usually say, how are you, brother? And it, for some reason, that doesn't seem entirely appropriate, considering what the hell you, you and your family have just just been through. But I'll, I'll say it anyway. How are you, mate? Um, I'm, I'm pretty good, actually, because um, obviously for those who haven't heard, um, my house has been set on fire after I stood up and spoke about anti-social behaviour um, online um, and saw my car, caravan and house was set on fire while we were asleep at night. But fortunately, we're all out. Um, but the outpouring of support has been absolutely amazing. And from the core family, it's just been something to behold. Um, but with it, just sort of use this platform now to, to make positive changes regarding anti-social behaviour. And that's that's keeping my spirits up because a lot of people are taking a lot of solace from the fact that someone's sort of stood up um, to be heard and sort of not back down. And, and that's that's what I want everyone to do. Um, so, yeah, my spirits are good. The kids are a little bit oblivious because they're only five and seven. Um, my missus is struggling, to be honest. Um, but uh, we're, in the, we're in the cauldron now. Uh, no pun intended. Um, so just try and make a difference now. There's yes. so many people whose voices aren't heard and they are suffering at the hands of uh, thugs um, through antisocial behaviour. So just to recap for our friends at home, I was messaged more, more, than, more than a few times to say, could I speak to Sean? Um, and somebody, I think they even tagged me in your in your video that you did, mate, which was quite quite emotional in itself. And I heard you. Well, I'll tell you what what I heard. So what I know is you're a former Royal Marine like myself. Um, you've suffered uh, injury in in active service, um, which is a big enough thing for any of us to be to be dealing with. And as of recently, by standing up to let's call them local thugs. Um, you then uh, had retribution from them and they set fire to your house. They set fire to your caravan. Um, was it something else? They set fire to your car or something, wasn't it? Car as well, yeah. So and your car. Um, putting aside the trauma that that must cause. And I'll, I'll ask you after this, you know, what, were you in the house, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to, to um, add on that then you realized as a result of your, uh, this, can I call it disability? Is that, is that all right? Your, your, yeah, your, yeah. your, your brain fine, injury yeah. that you had, that your house insurance had lapsed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If I didn't laugh about it, I'd cry. Yo, one second, mate. Yeah, uh, crying would probably be the option most of us would 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 take, mate. Um, well, you say that. However, uh, um, would I be 
sort of in a position to say, right, enough's enough, stand up to it, if, if it hadn't have been for the core. Um, no, the, 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 the core ethos and, and, and what the, the Marines, um, the foundations of the Marines is built on, and, and, and you know what, the, 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 pers the, the people you become from that, I think it, it gives us all that, that resilience and that determination that, you know, uh, many will never understand. And it's, yeah, it's, I've got a lot to be thankful for um, from the core and just seeing veterans in general, all the veterans from up, all across the services come together. Absolutely breathtaking, unbelievable. Yes, the support you can get from the military family is is not to be, um, you know, dismissed, is it? Absolutely not. Um, message of support. Positively, people wanted to come in and get things done um, pretty quickly. People offering, um, you know, building services, uh, electricians. Uh, I had one get in touch off. He, he, um, He's, he runs a business where he provides guard dogs, um, wanting to provide that. People offering um, breaks away, holiday getaways to take the family away. It's just been absolutely unbelievable. Stunning yeah. words with it all. Big credit to, to all of you good people out there that have that have stepped in to, to help. Um, how are the how are your children? The, the kids, the, they're okay. My me, me daughter, so my little boy, Benjamin, he's five. My little girl, George, she's seven. And um, when we brought them out the house, when, it, you know, it was, we, we realised the you know, the extent of the situation. Um, we covered them up so they didn't see the fire. They haven't seen the damage caused and, um, you, know, you know, the, the piles of ash that it's left and we'll keep that away from them so with just the generosity and kindness that's that's gone on this last over the last few days they're a little bit oblivious to it um which is great my wife however that's not the case um you, you can already see those signs of PTSD and, and and you know the trauma that's still going on with her but but the kids are fine. The kids are fine. They're at school today. We just keep the routine as as, as normal as possible. And um, yeah, we'll get through this. We will get through this. Good, good. I'm guessing you what you know from your wife's perspective. Well, all of your perspective, but but particularly your wife from what you've just said, it it must make you feel quite vulnerable. Yeah. An Eng yeah. Englishman's home is his castle, her castle, and you you think that the law is there to protect you, and then in situations like this, there's this. Am I right in saying there's a gap in the law that that it kind of everything falls into, and and you you fall into this lack of protection completely. And I'm, I mean, it's it's one thing I've I've got to stress. Um, the police bear the brunt of the public's annoyance at the fact that nothing's done um, without actually taking into account if you spoke to any police officer, they'd want nothing more than to deal with, with um, you know, these problems of antisocial behaviour, burglary, any kind of crime um, much, much more effectively. However, the law well above their heads, well above their peer grades, doesn't support them to, in that fact. And that's, that's the issue. And just as you say there, there is a big gap from those at the top to the faces on the streets. Um, and that's, that's the issue. That gap needs to close. And officers will tell you, you know, we, there's ex-military who are working in the police force and they'll tell you they absolutely stretched they haven't got a chance, they haven't got the resources, the manpower, the time, or the, the power, the authority to, to deal with it. I mean, one thing, for instance, for me, for, so COVID, police officer can go and 
whack out a £200 fine on the spot for COVID. Why not do this for kids? You know, the very down to the very basic things, throwing litter on the floor, because that's where it starts and it just goes from there. Little kids, it's three, four, five year old, total lack of discipline in their lives. And then that just grows. So one day it might be just a carton of pop, then it be in someone's garden, and then it can turn into a stone at someone's window, then at a car. And you, you know what I'm saying? It just escalates, but something's got to be done right at the bottom and, and the, you know, the, the police, the, the, you say, why, why haven't they got more police on the streets? How do you expect to put more police on the streets? Um, the police officers that came to my house after it was set on fire the other day, they had to come from Durham City. My local police station is Pete Lee Police, but they had no one available. No one available for a house that had been set on fire while the family were inside asleep. That tells you all you need to know. It goes, the, the problem's rooted far deeper than just blaming, you know, it's, it's easy to blame the police um, and those on the streets, but we all know, we all know where the problems lie and that's the gap that needs addressing. Yes. So I guess we should point out here, this isn't a knock against our wonderful police force, but I literally was in a conversation yesterday in a, in a, um, one of my social media groups and one of my oldest friends again fellow bootneck has been a, a officer in the met for many years now and he's just handed his notice in sean for exactly the reasons you're saying um lack of support to do the right thing everybody you know pointing at policy or um dismissing their responsibilities for the for the officers below them the office is below them are getting fed up because I'm going to go out on the limb here um, and I'm not getting the support. And then therefore I'll be one that's left in the shit. I'll have to face charges. You know, I'll, I'll have to face re repercussions either on my person or, or my career and this sort of thing. So this is um, hopefully uh, something that our, our, uh, constabulary will will address what i will say again for people listening i'm not going to ask sean the particulars of the these i don't know if they're youngsters or whatever um let's not even go there sean because i can see that there's obviously in most probability there's going to be a court case coming and i don't want you to say anything in the podcast that later gets pulled up in court if it might be, you know, a little bit of wrong information, do, do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, completely, yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you how it came, how this came about, which is, you know, that's there and it's not going to sort of incriminate, it's not going to do anything because it was totally um, anonymous anyway. So basically, I was driving through a village and this, uh, this is where it gets to. So in between two villages, Wingate and Shotton, which is where I live, I was driving, um, to Shotton, go to the garden centre, get some Mother's Day flowers for the kids. And um, there's a car at a junction, and as I've gone past, I, I saw the corner of my me, me eye, um, someone on a motorbike, off-road, straight away, he just mounted the kerb, shot round, wheelied away, and I looked over and I'm like, oh, shit, what are you doing? Is this for real or what? I pipped at him. And then from there, he just breaks on and he rode by the side of the car, but literally... So at that gap away and you're like, is this for real? Um, and he, he did that for 500 metres, Gordoners and all the rest of it. I pulled into relay by further up and then he just started causing criminal damage with his bike um, in that area. So there was three, four other people affected by this, including one elderly gent who um, was actually sprayed with the mud when he was pulling wheelies over the side of the road. And then, I was made aware sort of later on of um, a Snapchat image of my house from um, it, just a name who I've never heard of before in my life, don't know who he is. And it was a house, picture of my house with a flame emoji in front of us. And phoned the police, obviously reported that. And then two days later, my house set on fire. Now. My house is at the bottom of a cul-de-sac. It's out the way. The only reason you'd go there would be to 
if you lived there or you were visiting someone there. So to have the next come into the street, do that and then put it out over social media. That's the, pro these, these morons just think they're invincible. And that's, it's just got to change. It's just got to change. Absolutely disgusted. I'm absolutely disgusted. Yeah, it, mate, you must be a lot of things. It, it beggars, it beggars belief and I'm probably not best qualified. I mean, I, I reckon if a police officer was here, they'd probably be able to elucidate upon why this sort of, why people can get away with this, um, yeah. this sort of behavior. Um, and like you say, when you think that they're, they're, they're battering old ladies, um, wrestling them to the ground and carting them off in handcuffs, because at the grand old age of 70, they believe they, uh, and quite rightly so, have the freedom to wear what they want when they go out in public and to not listen to the mainstream media and the BBC, what I would call brainwashing. And they're getting battered and carted away. You know, these are our elderly people that have been through a bloody war. Um, and then something like this happens and, and there's, there's an obvious um, loophole. I, I, I'm guessing you're upset, traumatized, um, angry, worried for the, for the future. Yeah. Um, and my God, what? what I mean, that's it. Because the dust's going to settle at some point, inevitably. And then do I then become another tar a target again from some other yobs who just want to have a pot shot and make themselves famous? Um, more than likely, <laughs> that's just the nature of the beast. But like I've said, this is the, this is the point now you, you can see, it's clear to see the upset um, across the country. The, the response has been absolutely amazing. And not just heartfelt sort of best wishes, but also people telling me their stories. Um, a, a family who live in a house, uh, the house over the road has become a little bit of a sort of drug den as such, afraid to leave the house. Um, a family from, I think we were in Yorkshire, Leeds or Rotherham was ringing a bell. Had so many messages and... Um, Two youngsters on little off-road bikes um, rode over the front garden. You know, it just absolutely ruined it. He went outside, chased them away. And the next night, um, they, they turned up in, a, in an off-road like truck and right next to the house. And she says, we just, you know, we, we, we're afraid now. And th this isn't a story that I'm making up. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. And, it, and that's what, that's the annoying thing. It's not the, the annoyance of, yeah, my house is gone. It's the fact that chances are the sentence will be lenient if they, if they go down and then let out on good behaviour, all the rest of it. But some of these are poison. And this rehabilitation, it's not always going to work because some just don't want to be rehabilitated. And that's the frustrating thing, how people... And now living in fear from all walks of life, all backgrounds. And it's just absolutely shocking. You've only got to look at the Bristol protests last night and then how the media portray, portray that. And then the police uh, being painted in the picture of just being, you know, police brutality to the extreme and all the rest of it. Just hang on a minute. Do you realise what's happening? Going to the, back to the unfortunate... Um, with the vigil last week. Now, all these youngsters of, well, all walks of life have gathered together and I take my hat off to what the cause is. But the, the police, far above their heads, they've got a job to do and they've been doing that job and then been absolutely ridiculed for it because it was in support of um, the, the, poor, the poor young lady who, who from up in this area actually who who died and it's there's too much 
there's too much um, negative portrayal from the media and social media is very much to blame for this when you just go back through to the Black Lives Matter protests and all the rest of it. Um, you, you know, social media and the media in general can paint a picture that they want you to see. But in actual fact, you know, you come and speak with the person on the street and get a real idea of what exactly what's going on and you'll get a better idea of what the problems are and what needs doing. And Sean, you, you work with young people. You're a teacher, aren't you? Is that right? Yeah, so, so I had a brain injury um, and thought, bloody hell, after coming back to, to Birmingham and then down to Headley Course, they did find a brain, so I thought, bloody hell, I'm going to use this. Um, let's put it to use. <laughs> and so I became a primary school teacher, loved it, um, totally related to the kids. Um, and it's, it's, you know, that, that's, that's the area I want to make a difference in because, you know, you can have an influence. And I work in a college now and, you know, there's just so, so many underprivileged um, kids who, you know, some, let's face it, the, from the second, the end of the world, they haven't got a chance because of the parents who've just given birth to them. And so hopefully you, you want to you wanna make a difference in, in that sense. You want to, you know, help them and realise that, you know, there's a life far beyond the surrounding area. Um, and a life of crime and drugs and, yeah. you know, just becoming a criminal and yeah. let's get away from that and just, you know, move away, go and, you know, achieve something you, you, that you're capable of. Um, the amount that come to me, uh, who I teach now in the, will I be fit enough to join the Marines? Do you think I'd, I'd be okay? And it's all in the mind, it's the mindset, and that's that's the most important thing. Um, if you have that positive mindset, if you tell yourself it's possible, then anything's possible. And that's that's what yeah, I wanna I wanna Sean, I wanna avoid going on a on a rant here, but my subscribers will but many of them very much know what's going on. I call it the agenda, the agenda of the sociopaths. And they set out to destroy young people's minds um, across the board, confusing them about what it is to be a man or a woman, um, uh, confusing them about things like sexuality, massive agenda to soften people up. Um, I could go on and on and on, but people who watch my podcast know what I'm, what I'm talking about. It, it's... It's an awful situation that that most people are too asleep to realize is going on. And it's all done for a reason. It's all done for this one world government. So you've got a group of sociopaths controlling the whole show, using their uh, uh, technology, et cetera, et cetera, having a having a, a, a global society that is just so damaged that the left hand doesn't even know that there's a bloody right hand, right? And it's it's hard. The Limston now, so the Royal Marines training ground, Limston Commando, they've had to add another four weeks on to training because young people are turning up. I'm just going to say it, and this is, I mean, no, just, I'm a youth worker, Sean. So yeah. like yourself, I'm passionate about, about young young. Uh, young people um, but it has to be said they're rocking up to Limston and they don't know what's happening they, they, they you know they, they're not used to this to the re the real world environment it's all been so softened you know you can't say this you can't say that you can't believe that you can't think that and it's all just agenda to set one person up against the other so that society squabbles and gets soft well these maniacs they just it's not even about money for them it's just about the yeah. the, 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 the the power game um and i get it reflected in the messages that i get sent from young people and again i mean no no disrespect but it, it i get things like chris if i join the marines will i have to leave home because i'm a bit i'm a bit worried about that 
and what I want to reply is the leaving home part is that's not that's kind of like your job it's the shoving a bayonet through another teenager's face that that's the bit you're going to struggle with especially because it's to make these fucking sociopaths even more powerful than they already are right it's the modern the role of the modern the modern warrior unbelievable hence why i do my worrying these days on 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 youtube and social media and yeah i get it and and i a lot of the upheaval in society um it's per you know it's on purpose this mass illegal immigration that we're suffering it's all just to create division in 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 what was essentially our you know I'm an Englishman. It's a beautiful country, England, full of wonderful people. And it's just getting smashed. Um, this woke agenda that they put through the universities. And by the end of studying youth work for three years, and I did a year and a half of social work. I'm just like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a joke, mate. You know, the education Absolutely. has been completely, I don't know, a cur- corrupted by these idiots and and yeah you you you're getting two people squabbling over <laughs> you know two people squabbling over the same same thing and 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 these folks love it sorry sorry friends i know i've gone on a little bit there but this is this is what we need to needle out and 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 when when you hear of this carnage that's going on it's also it's also divisive it's also outside of what we would have called in the old days community you know where the copper would clip you around the head if he caught you damaging someone's property wouldn't take you down you know put you in pretty take you to brown to your old man who then would have a word with you and exactly. you, know, you, you didn't do it again right now all this has become now you can't let i'm not suggesting people lay hands on people of course not but what i'm saying is the police must be so scared to know you know what what the limits of their their power are and if they're going to wind up in court the next week because they've you know said oi sonny don't do that and that's sonny's turn around so actually i i don't identify you know i don't <laughs> identify with yeah. with a gender I'm, I'm an octo I'm a pink octopus right it, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm making sort of slightly light of it I just want the the people listening that aren't aware that this is part of an agenda it's not just an accident that England's happened to fall into absolute chaos with open borders Sweden's now the, the I've lived in Sweden it's a beautiful country wonderful people now the rape capital of of Europe um and yeah, you know, it it's not going to get better, folks. It's not going to get better because no one's in. No one's interested, Sean. Yeah, completely. And and that's the frightening thing. Um, partly the reason, uh, you know, of, of putting me head above the parapet, um, with me missus was to, well, it wasn't. This was the justification. I don't want my kids growing up in this kind of environment. I don't want them growing up in this kind of environment because it's only going one way and that's down. Um, and just like you said there, that the, the fact that these divisions are being created, I had a meeting with the parish council on Saturday morning and this was before the fire, this was arranged. This was arranged after the motorbike incident and I was just fed up. And um, just something's got to be put in place. Now, our village is joined onto another smaller village called Station Town, which is joined onto another smaller village called Hutton Henry, which is a school where I go. I've spent all my life in Wingate. Wingate's got a parish council. Station Town's got a parish council. Hutton Henry's got a parish council. They all work separately. So Wingate used to have a youth scheme. The kids in Station Town and Hutton Henry couldn't go to that youth scheme because of the fact that it was only for kids of Wingate. And here's where the problem lies. That division's created and just people are unwilling to work together and move in, you know, a direction as a collective. And that's where you'll see the results. 
we know that from the you know from the core where you know it's it's essential that you can work um, as an effective member of a team um, you know to to uh, to achieve a common goal and that's that's where it's fallen down it's every it's like every man for themselves it's that very so you know one one of the commando ethos um, the commando of spirits and selfishness that needs the selfishness needs, you know, sucking out of society because some people are, it is a case of, um, I want a bigger car than him, a bigger house than her. Um, I want my kids to wear these clothes, yada, yada, yada. You can't hang about with him because um, he lives on that estate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no, I think we are a divided country and, you know, using things like race and culture t- as, as excuses, which I've seen because I worked in schools where, you know, I've seen different races and cultures and where kids, uh, you know, they're encouraged by the parents to avoid um, associating themselves with those because, uh, the, the, you know, they may, they may be um, Muslims or Sikhs or whatever. And it's, it goes on on a playground at 10 year olds. And that's the frightening thing. We're a flipping human being. At the end of the day, we're all human beings. Mm. We're, and, and that's, it's absolutely disgusting. It's shocking. And, you know, yeah, people need to be held accountable and made responsible for, for how, how the kids turn out. Because it's, at the end of the day, it's the next generation is going to dictate how we move forward from this. Yeah, it's... It... It's a bit of a quagmire subject to negotiate. Again, going slightly back here to the immigration thing, but one of my um, university placements, I work with asylum seekers. And from the kind of, I don't know, I think people call it left wing. I'm not really that into, I don't really, I've never voted and I don't watch mainstream media. I I don't think it, A, A, I don't think it's helpful. And, B, I don't think it's it's the truth. And I, I think you get one life and you've got to live the truth. And I can't be dealing with watching nonsense and, and then regurgitating as if that kind of makes me clever or something, right? But the kind of agenda at the uni was um, that all these people are victims, right? And I wouldn't dispute because I met genuine asylum seekers, people that have been tortured, people that had been in the back of a lorry for, with, with just a litre of water, no food or maybe a sandwich um, for, for, for three days to, to, to get to the U- UK and this kind of thing. And of course, we signed up to the, um, uh, the Human Rights Act and, 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 and and the um, asylum act and these kind of things so you know as a uk person if i start getting discriminated against in my country say based on my sexuality i I can go to france and i can claim asylum and that's that's a good thing right but what but the, the 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 truth was some of these uh, so-called asylum asylum seekers they they were really just illegal immigrants that had come um, for a better life, of which I don't blame them, right? It's just, it's just that, and it was the same when I've been, I mean, I've driven, I've driven to India and back. When you start getting to, um, in into Europe, you start heading around Turkey, Iran, this sort of thing. Um, you get a lot of, um, immigrants camping out at the borders where they're making their next move to get to, to to Europe, to get to the United Kingdom. And they and, and they I'm not saying they're not nice people or anything like that. As a traveler, you get on with everybody, right? But they'll come up to you, Sean, and say, could you stick me, you know, in your luggage compartment on the bus and, and take me back to the UK? And again, I don't blame anyone for wanting a better life. I've certainly tried my old life to get a better life, right? But it does um it does create a problem when you have so many people coming into country that have very different 
uh, cultural background to yourself again as Sweden is is finding out and I'm using that as an extreme example I'm not suggesting uh, everybody that wants a better life is is a, is a criminal um, but the issue we're faced with in the UK is now we're very much like one one child families you know two is possibly bordering on normal three is sort of not it's not really the thing anymore but of course families coming from Africa are like well you know I've got three partners 16 kids and and we, we need to accept that it's not racist to say what's going to happen to little England if they're reproducing at three times the rate and the English population is actually the indigenous population is going down it's it's not going to be good you know yeah. I, I mean you we have will have to live that reality again uh, as i'm saying that they find that place like malma now got no go areas um you know the the differences i've i've met many people in you know uh, 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 pakistan for example never seen a naked woman sean right they're, they're like if you know if a woman wears a short skirt she she's begging for it basically and she's yeah. she's fair she's fair game she's a slut right and and i'm not here to judge pakistani culture not whatsoever and i'm not tying everybody into that but what i'm saying is you can see you know you can sort of see the the um where where, where it's going to get problematic and i know a lot of people are, are, are feeling this now and my final point um Again, I apologize, we're sort of going slightly away from, from your, your story at the moment. But my final point is, I wouldn't be bothered if this was something that's, it's just going to happen. It's, it's the way life, it, but it's not. It's the agenda of the, the sociopathic elite. They know exactly what they're doing, you know, they know exactly what, what they're doing. And um, yeah, things are going to get, you know, Th things won't get better the same with this whole whole nonsense that we're putting up with at the minute because people won't speak their minds that ain't gonna get you think your children will be free uh -uh. they can be locked in their houses now just like that and and with the exception of the beautiful warriors out there that have got the guts to to stand up to it the vast majority have gone okay you know uh, yeah you know, on, on no, uh, ah, I could go on. So, Sean, I'm sorry, mate, but it, it, it's, I think it's, you know, obviously difficult time for yourself and your family, but we, we're all facing this, this is, is in cohesion even a word, but you know, this lack of community, this, this breaking down of, you know traditional values i say values i don't mean traditional ways because sometimes traditional ways can be wrong um but yeah I, I i i just do you feel your situation fits into completely completely you've just got got to go back to the four we live by you know that unselfishness integrity you know your determination your cheerfulness in the face of adversity we know all about these and, and it's those values um, that, that have been lost, that integrity across society now, you know, that determination and that motivation to, to, to achieve and do well, um, you know, and not expect, I, I see it in, in college, some just want everything handed to them on a plate. And it's just, it is frightening. It is frightening. Um, for future generations especially when you're looking at your kids and but you you know i've i've got an impact i can impact my kids and um, the young i've got that you know i've got that power um what you don't have is the power to tell them at a certain age where they go who they speak to which groups they conform to um and that's the frightening thing that's the frightening thing yes I don't know about you, mate, but if I wasn't a parent, I wouldn't, I, it, it, I'd care because I'm a caring sort of person, I try to be, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be such a bloody clincher if I wasn't a parent, you know? 
exactly. I could sit back and just freaking drink myself to death like I used to in the old days. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't laugh, but you know, boot necks are boot necks. Followed by uh, your BFT and a CFT. Yeah, you know, but when I when I see <laughs> what adults try to do to my child, and if if us as parents we didn't step in and say sorry not you know this is just non-thinking adults that just watch their goggle box believe it's true and 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 it's just the mouthpiece for the sociopaths and they just carry out their their agenda on your young person and it's 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 awful no oh. that's that's the yeah so had i come it came out the house a little bit earlier, had I caught one of them, had I, you know, let's say, sort of relieved some of my frustrations on this person. Who's the one in the shit? Mm. Who's the one that goes down for that? Who's the one that suffers? Yeah, I might have saved the house, might have saved the car, the caravan, but I'd be the one charged. And that's it. It's just when you when you went back to the um, the point you made at the start, uh, an Englishman's home. You know your home. That's where you're supposed to feel safe. You should feel safe. That's where you you know you. That's that's your land. That's mm -hmm. your. Um, and I, I just want to point out, and again, I don't want to mention any like little names that are in the media at the minute because people know what i'm talking about and i don't want to go and get you know in, in trouble with the various platforms that we're on but we're moving to a point now where the police can just charge in your house and remove your your children from you right they're gone they're your kids they they're, they're, they're gone put into care because you won't you know, you, you see through this agenda and you're saying, I don't want to be a part of that. So just leave me alone. You know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're all born in, as free humans. You know, it's our, does it call it an in, in, inalienable right to be free, to travel, so long as we don't hurt any, any, anybody else. That's going. Now they can say, oh, this person won't wear a, you know, a certain thing when he go, does his shopping. Will not 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 fit to be a parent right and, and ugh, i'm sorry folks i'm being a bit um you know i'm painting a bad picture because it is a bad picture it, it, it it's just the way it is it um and we just all got to wake up to it basically <laughs> all right it's as easy as that it's taken me 51 years to get my head around it it's not that easy but if you, if you love yourself, you love your family, you love your community, you, 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 you'll find a way to, to see what's going on. Sean, have you heard of this? Um, it's like a points based red flagging system that they use in Australian um, education. I'm, I'm guessing they do it in league with the social, the social um uh, the social field, so the social workers and youth workers, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know too much about it, to be honest. I haven't looked deeply into it. I've heard of it, yeah. So in a nutshell, and I've got a friend who's a headmistress in, in Australia, and, and we've talked a lot about this, and she says that they've got this system where by multi-agency working, so this is what we, we were talking about earlier, rather than people being separate and I'm all right, Jack, I'm, I'm doing my job here, I don't need to know what you're, you're doing. That, that's all scrubbed round now, as you know, as a teacher. So teachers now work with the social workers, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll work with the GPs, they'll work with probation, um, the substance misuse specialist, what, whatever it might be to manage a family so the family get the best outcome and, and essentially the kids don't get removed. This is a, I've done a lot of that, that work um, um, myself being a part of this multi-agency approach. Um, in Australia, by using this approach, they look at the, the children when they're very young, so as toddlers, and they start to build up this, this point system as to how likely from all the indicators, so let's say absent parent, substance 
misuse by which I obviously include alcohol, you know, within the, within the family unit. So yeah. dad's drinking or whatever, or mum's on mum's on the gin. <laughs> um, uh, um, abuse is there abuse? You know, is it likely that there's abuse going on, or has abuse been registered by the by the police, who are also another uh, agency that are part of this approach? And they build up a picture, Sean, of what's going on in this young person's life so that they then, when, when they're entering the school years, they can put measures in place to, su to support that child as best as possible, to kind of uh, soften what they're going through, to recognise that this is a child that's probably going to struggle in school because yeah. their brain is too focused on what's happening to them when they get when they get home in the you, you, you know and the reason i mentioned when thinking the, the situation you're going through undoubtedly the well i say undoubtedly i mean people aren't just born evil we're a product of our our upbringing environment aren't we you know yeah. the people that you're describing that have done you harm we've got to ask ourselves the question what the hell have they been going through in their lives to turn out such, you know, I was going to say rotten eggs. It sounds really old fashioned. <laughs> but. I know that. I mean, this is the thing. This is why the, you know, I'm not sitting here now annoyed and just want to get hold of the, you know, the, the bastards who've done it because I'm not aware of their background. I don't know what they've gone through. I don't know what chances they've had and what chances they haven't. You know, and, and you've really got to take that into account. Now, rather than just categorizing all kids who run around in tracksuit bottoms, um, they're, they're just hanging off and, they're, they're, you know, they're just jumping on horseback and they throwing stones at cars. Rather than just categorizing all these, these kids as hoodlums, as, um, you know, as some messages have come back and oxygen thieves and all the rest of it, he should be, you know, he needs taken into a darkened corner and taped. You don't know the backgrounds, you don't know the home lives, and that's that's um that's the thing. That's the thing. Uh now the Australian um way of, of dealing with that, that's that's fantastic because um you know, a lot of these kids, they just want to be loved. But they go past the stage where, you know, there's there's no turning back. That's there. What's happened cannot be reversed. But hopefully, um, with the things that could be put in place in schools, um, you can hopefully reverse some of that. But there's too much pressure on schools to perform, so you don't get the chance to do all that. Mm. Um, you know, that nurture. I mean, as a teacher, I went in and it took me by surprise the first two years. The, the teaching sometimes comes second or third. I end up being a social worker, a confidant, a role model, a parent. Um, you know, teaching the I remember sitting in the school hall teaching kids how to use a knife and fork. Now, these are kids from the ages of seven up to 10, and I'm showing them how to use a knife and fork. Now, yeah, that sounds just completely immaterial, but as I said before, that's the stepping stones that just leads to, and it just goes to show what's going on in the in the parents' homes. And yeah, it reminds me of when when you join the corps and you have your your what that used to be called induction when I was in. They changed it. Yeah, that sounds weeks. like that sounds like brainwashing. They call it foundation now, and um, your DL rocks up with just a towel round and goes right everyone in the showers I'm going to te teach you how to wash and depending on what background you come from you think eh? I, like I know how to have a shit but then of course you forget that Scottish people for example they don't get taught how to have a shower do they so they just don't know and <laughs> they <laughs> um, but it, it but it is funny for, I, I, on a serious note for our friends at home no i'm being serious some some some, some kids rock up to limpston and they don't know how to wash because yeah. you know in a, it, 
the great thing about the Marines, it's quite a leveler. It gives you all, whether you know it or not, you get that basic sort of those basic skills, um, skills for life. But you reminded me then of I, when I was young, I think I was about 10 at primary school. I'd already been through a world of shit, Sean, I won't even go into, but I think my parents, they'd, I think they'd separated three times by this stage. So I've been to, I've been to about five different schools already, right? I had to live up the other end in a completely alien part of the country to where I was born and, and or to where I'd grown up, all this sort of stuff. And this was starting to come out in my personality as a kid. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and, and, and the reason I'm saying this is it goes back to that thing where everyone goes, yeah, hang them, you know, put them up against the wall. They're scum. They're, and it's like, folks, we need to understand that in my situation, I started bullying a girl in my class, right? Fortunately, it was stopped literally. I think I hid her school bag or something. It was... It, it, we were all doing it and um, that's not an excuse but that's what kids are like right you know you... and um of course i was too young to know that this is a girl that's going through her own world of shit in her own background and it and it wasn't her stuff was probably like worse than mine and the headmaster just pulled me to one side and said chris can i have a word with you and he and he said listen god i'm gonna try not to get upset now but he said I know what you're going through. That's what he said. I know what you're going through. He said, and Chris, but you can't take that out on other people. That was all he needed to say, Sean, and it stuck with me for life. Unfortunately, yeah. um, you know, that's sort of the end of my career as a bully. It <laughs> stopped in its tracks. But just him understanding. And then when I was a, a comprehensive, a similar thing, a silly thing, we went for a phase of, going down the market and buying these day glow socks. We had day glow red and day glow orange or something like or luminous green or something. And we'd wear one, one yellow sock and one, one day glow <laughs> red with our slip on loafers or whatever it was thinking we were, you know, dead cool. And uh, again, the, the deputy headmaster called me across. He went, Chris, um, I've heard things aren't quite right. I mean, this is, so I'm a teenager now. I'm not a child anymore yeah. and things still ain't right. He said, I know things aren't, aren't right at home. He said, let's, let's, you know, let, I'm not going to have a go at you for that. He said, but do you think you could wear the same colour socks? <laughs> and I'll never forget that kindness, you know, he understood, yeah. he, he knew what was, he, he, he got it, you know, and hopefully, um, you know it, 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 it all it all goes in there maybe these lessons don't come up you don't you don't go back and use them for 20 years of your life and I didn't because I had 20 years of utter stu stupidity <laughs> of which that's I'm the key though it, it is the key that someone comes back to you and, and someone does you know at that young age you know when you're still very much learning your place in the world you're finding out about yourself you're finding out about the environment of someone just coming and putting an arm around you and rather than giving you a bollock and say, you know what, um, this could be a better way. And that that doesn't happen enough, especially in school, saying it. Um, yeah, punishments, uh, you know, it's let's um it's gotta be deeper understanding. Um, I don't think it happens enough in school. Um in the place I work now. The, the support for the kids is unbelievable and the understanding is unbelievable. Um, the last head, one, the head teacher I had when I went through training, um, he, he went in as acting head actually. He was, he was wonderful with the kids and he totally got it. And if you've got that, then you know that's when you're going to start changing lives. Um, I mean, my parents fought as a kid. They were very violent. Um, I've stopped my mum killing my dad and I've stopped my dad killing my mum. Um, and in some cases, I've got the scars to prove it. Now, do I just think that that's um, acceptable? Do I then follow that same route? When Do I then think that, you know, domestic violence is, is okay? 
and use that as an excuse to, to move on to more serious things. Fortunately, um, I didn't do that and, and realised, you know, that that's not the way you want to move forward. And, and um, you know, those the cases like mine aren't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen enough because the kids haven't got the support. Mm. It's just, yeah, it's sad. I, I just want to say a couple of things to finish off like this part of our, our chat, Sean. Um, the, the first thing I want to say is these, um, let's just call them young people that have wronged you, are they... Uh, are they English people or are, are, are we talking immigrants here? From from what I believe, um, young kids who have been brought up in local villages, lived all their lives. Um, so, yeah, English kids. Yeah, I, I only yeah. wanted to ask because one of our oppos, oppo friends at home is a, is a buddy from the Marines. Um, Alex Carney has been... He's been on a, um, let's call it a warrior mission. I won't say crusade. It sounds a bit rude, but um, he's been, he's up there in Scotland. I think he's outside Glasgow and he's been highlighting. Um, I don't want to say a nationality here, but it, am I right in thinking the Romanian community he's just been highlighting some real horrible stuff that's been going on again that the 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 law doesn't seem to be um addressing that so that was the that was the reason i i asked you but you're saying these are local yeah yeah um yeah it's just yeah that's it's just it's just sad, yeah. It's yeah. just sad. I've so, got a lot of words with it all, really. Yeah, I can see that, mate. So on a on a constructive note, um, for a start, anyone watching this podcast, feel free to download it, share it. If you're media journalists watching, you 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 have my permission to reuse this material. Um, how can people support you Sean there was a fundraiser that somebody kindly set up wasn't there unbelievable um so Kev um a friend I haven't seen him a few years ago at a Newcastle football match actually um but prior to then he he left the car after um oh I think it was Harry 12 or I'm not sure I can't think back he, he had left the car he's and um, you know he's he's had his own sort of battles with um, wh whatever's gone on in the car, and he started a, the GoFundMe page, and I'm just you know it was just a, a little something to help out, which I wasn't aware of to be honest. Um, and it's just absolutely snowballed, and it just goes to show. It, yeah, the core family, the wider military family, um, how this, you know, it's 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 reached out to people, this story and, and the and the horror that's that's occurred. But also to the general public, not just in the UK as well. I'm I'm receiving messages from Perth, from New Zealand, from Ghana, um, Canada, and you know, people who relate to the fact that things are changing on the streets so communities are becoming you know much much more unstable and Frag fragmented yeah young people have been sold this goal of the bloody mercedes and the rolex and the pop star lifestyle and and they ain't gonna let's Absolutely. face it you know they're about as much likely to get it as i am we don't teach them the right stuff. Actually, we're born perfect. We're born in. We're born into paradise. You just got to connect with the universe. As long, oh, you're going out of focus. Surprise, surprise. Uh, you got to connect with the universe. As long as you got a roof over your head, just yeah. you know, everything else is is is. Um, sorry, I've gone a bit, gone a bit out of focus, haven't I? <laughs> 
Typical. Hang on. Oh, you're coming back in. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Like my beautiful face for you, Sean. Look at that, eh? <laughs> Should have put my green green lid on, shouldn't I? I'm I'm um, sort of thinking, you know, this HD it has its um it has its downside, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Hey, hey, you joke, right? There's an actual, there is an actual setting when you set your webcam up called sharpness. And for podcasters, they say knock it down a bit so you don't show all the wrinkles on your face. <laughs> and I've had to knock it down quite quite a bit. Shame it doesn't doesn't do the grey hair. Um, <laughs> is this the just just giving page that we're talking about? Um, or are there two? Yeah. I'm looking now at justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Sean Ivy and uh bloody hell people have given generously mate haven't they which which one is that I think it was this is uh we're raising I'm just going to read what it says we're raising two thousand pounds to help yeah. a former Royal Marine etc etc what we all know this is from Kevin yeah um uh, it's unbelievable. I'm not going to say the total because I don't want people uh, to to think, oh, uh, that guy's sorted, because I'm sure that the the repercussions of this um, are not just going to end with you getting your house fi- you know, and fixed up in a new car, what, what, whatever. We're, we're talking serious. Uh, this is a seriously traumatising incident. Um, but, yeah. So I'm just going to put that link, friends, below the video, so you can go and check it out. Your um, check it out yourself. Um, yes. So, well, well done, the great British uh, public, and I'm I'm guessing there's a, the global public as as well. And um, I've got um, to, you know, I've got to, I, I'm trying to to to, to um, reply to the individ- mess- messages individually. The comments on actual Facebook posts I've put on themselves, there's just so many it would take. I'd, I'd need to yeah. just take Mate, up just a full-time get, job. Just get an, auto, messages just, coming through. Just get an but, auto reply on because everybody will understand you've got your children and your, your partner to, to look after. That's your priority that, at the moment. You know, we, as I said, we haven't shed tears over what we've lost. We've shed tears over the support and I, I, I could never express me me gratitude and how how thankful we are for the generosity um, of people and just the, the, the empathetic nature of people. If anyone didn't have any faith in society, go on, have a look, read the stories, read the comments coming back, and, and it will restore your faith that there are decent human beings living among us who were keep being kept quiet and it's just it's absolutely it's mind blown it's it's absolutely astonishing and just thank you yes human beings are wonderful i've been fortunate to you know like yourself to see a lot of the world and uh, and it, it, i've met people with different ideas might not necessarily want them living living next door to me and god that really does sound racist but but no, I'm, I'm just being truthful. However, the vast majority of the hundreds of thousands of people I met have, have just been kind, wonderful um, human beings. And those that aren't, as Sean and I have discussed, that they're wayward. And wayward people need to be brought back into the fold with, with empathy, understanding, kindness, and a strict, you know, and a strict hand um sadly we don't see this wonderful beauty and humanity that you're experiencing now sean because these idiots i keep mentioning it's their sole job is to just destroy our opinions of one another to get us all bickering amongst ourselves rather than being the beautiful global community that we are and and and, and local so yeah. just to reiterate friends i'll put Sean's links below so that you can um, get involved should you so wish and I, I encourage you to do so. Sean can we talk a little bit about your time in the core now and then we can yeah, finish I'm, on a... I am sort of running a, li- a little short now as well sorry. Um, 
But no. yeah, I mean, I love the core. I, I joined on a whim. I, I always wanted to be a teacher and um, PE teaching initially. And how I came to join, join and um, so my cousin joined the army from school. My other cousin joined the Navy, who happened to be my two best mates. I was 18, going on to 19 at college. And um, I was like, oh, I, I like what they're doing. Sounds interesting, but if I'm going to do anything, I want to be better. And then I joined the Corps. Didn't realise where I was letting myself in for. Uh, and then you get off the train and you know you're just like a rabbit in headlights. What, what year but was this? 2001, 2001. Uh, that's, that's when training got really easy, wasn't it? <laughs> ah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and um, from getting off the train down at Limston and just the whole life after that, it, you can't put into words. It's just, yeah, there's, I mean, you have your moments, of course, during, um, you know, time spent away. Um, time spent at home, leaving the family, at, at, you know, on New Year's Day to go to Norway, um, going out to Afghan and picking young kids up who have been blown up playing football, um, to uh, turning into an alcoholic almost um, through the culture that's created. Needs to um, be said, mate, needs to be said, especially in this current suicide epidemic. It's, yeah, you know mental health and drugs and alcohol just don't mix do they absolutely not mm. but what what a, a magic life what a what a phenomenal experience what a what it's instances like this it does if you if if you didn't realize you do afterwards how strong that brotherhood is that that bond created um and it's it's just sad that people have forgotten that's um I'm working with the RMA and, well the RMA are working with me they've been excellent in in support the Royal Marines Association um but ex um RSM's getting in touch just and they just want to help and that's not only there when you come out and something like this happens it's there when you're in the core and it's uh, yeah it was just absolutely magical uh, so yeah, it was so it, just coming up to fifteen. Well, it was it was fifteen years spent. Um, had an accident, uh, resulted in a you know I had a couple of bleeds on the brain, and that was sort of the the beginning of the end with the, the problems that resulted from that. Can but, you ask what happened? Yeah, funnily enough, coming through it, um, you know what I had done previously. Um, I was involved in a. In an accident in Norway, uh, we're out there cold weather training, um, and then there was a head injury, basically um, hit by a car walking back from town. Um, some young kid on the road, he's lost control of the car, and that was sort of the beginning of, of the end, really, um, with regards to the car. But rather than see that as, a, um, you know, as oh, that's the end of it, feel sorry for yourself. Uh, just going to, you know, do this, that, and the other. I'm going to claim off the government, and so I've got a disability now, etc., etc., etc. Just sort as a chance to move forward and just, um, you know, explore new avenues. But you take solace from, you know, the likes of, of Ramas, Mark Armrod, and what he's done and what he's gone through and how we came out the other end. And I remember I got in touch with them when I was in Headley Court. I was really struggling mentally, and I'd heard about, you know, how how he also struggled down Headley and, and beyond. I remember seeing one post he put on and it was along the lines of, he couldn't imagine going back to his life and it being as fulfilling before the, the explosion. Mm -hmm. And for a triple amputee to say that, that was just, that struck a nerve. And I was like, mindset, that's it. Your mindset's right, everything else will follow. Yeah, exactly. And there's our mind is so powerful that that you can just con condition it to understand there's no such thing as negative experiences or positive. There's just experiences and it's up to you. Um, yeah, I mean some some 
experiences can obviously be highly unpleasant as 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 you're seeing at the moment sean but uh, our mind is quite a powerful tool isn't it to to re reframe yeah. situations for for a more positive outcome it, it's it's a common it's a common expression we use from the from the core and um, everything's character building but you know what it really is it really is character building and um yeah this is it determines it determines a man it determines a person um you know when you're knocked down how do you how do you respond how do you get back up and we'll come out of this stronger um we'll we'll try to make a difference you know we've had so much support we'll get back on our feet and then we'll use you know the the, the any funds that we we've got um to push and try and make a change um, and even if you rescue one, then it's a, it's a success. Yes. Yeah. Brother, on that note, um, I'm going to lift the living legend mug for you. There you are. Hey, thank That's you very much. This man is, okay. Absolutely um, not. I know. The legends are the ones who, you know, come out and support and... Yes, of course. And get it out there. That's, you know... Uh, Unbelievable. So, Sean, listen, give all, uh, on behalf of the podcast, give our love to your wonderful family and take some for yourself, mate. Um, if there's any way I can help you again, if you need to come back on the show, that's the door is always open. Um, for everybody out there, if you want to get involved, if you can see a way you can help media, etc., feel free to contact me. My email is on either youtube or it's on my website um big shout out to kevin miller for for getting the fundraiser up and running i i, I imagine kev you've taken an enormous weight off off the family's mind by your uh, your selfless actions so well done brother and um to everybody at home massive love to you all thank you so much for watching uh, uh, what's probably been the, one of the most important episodes of the Bought the T-Shirt podcast. Uh, people watching, if you haven't already done it, if you could please like and subscribe, um, that's going to help us to, to uh, show more uh, stories like this. So, ciao, ciao. Thank you. Thank you.